Look how many people are in already, you know. It's fucking building up quickly, man. Yes, got to see everybody, man. What's happening? Quick live. Do you listen to Lana Del Rey? What a good question, straight away. Straight away, man. Yeah, I listen to her now. Nice little white woman, Lana Del Rey. Yeah, she's a... Uh, She's quite nice, isn't it? So, good question. Oh yeah, the Hex Toys logo is in the video from now on, yeah? Hex Toys, you know, the official sponsor of the um, the channel. So yeah, he's helped, he's uh, supported me for a few years now. You know, trucking me a, a load of cash. So, we've got him on board, man. You know, my official sponsor, like MTK, so. It's good to see, man. Joe says, thanks, Tyen. I'm at rock bottom. I've been a bit low today, to be honest with you. It might be a bit of a low energy life, but been a bit low. I think it's because I haven't been training for a few days. Yeah, I've been vaping, drinking. I went out last night yeah, to this club and this nice little white woman. This 18 year old woman came up to me and kissed me on the lips. It was fucking nice, man. But yeah, man, shout out to Hex Toys. The link's in the description if you want to go on. I think he's into crypto, isn't it? So, crypto crashed. So, I don't really promote crypto anymore, but I'm still buying in. But yeah, I was going to do like a. You know, like a fucking watch along of this fucking Muppet here, Connor Bond. You know, his little interview with Piers Morgan. I was going to like do like a review of it, but it's, it was just dead, wasn't it? it was just, there was no exclusives. There was nothing new. The video is like 21 minutes long. Is it worth like watching together now and scrutinizing Connor Bond? You know, and his dad, Nigel Bond. He tried to get involved as well, didn't he, Nigel Bond? What do you think? Let me know in the fucking thing if you want me to play the video. Some zesty little cunts in the chat already, you know. You look gorgeous tonight, Ty. It's like some of you want to get put in time out, like it's an achievement. Put you in time out. You're happy now, yeah? Alright, I'm going to play it for a few minutes because I ain't got anything to talk about. You know, Connor Bomb, he was trying to use all the buzzwords, wasn't he? Oh, anxiety. Oh, depression. Panic attacks. Mental health. <laughs> he was trying to talk like that, wasn't he? Connor Bomb. You know, Piers Morgan. You know, trying to use those buzzwords. He was like saying, oh, racism, racism, racism. You know, my kids are experiencing racism. Let me just put this mic up here because my stomach's rumbling again for some reason. Fucking joking. Now you can hear me swallowing, which is even worse, isn't it? Would you rather hear me swallowing or fucking my stomach rumbling away? Someone said, show us your piss bottle. Yeah, that's actually got a bit of stale milk in it. You know, topped up with a bit of piss. So we got that, we got that on standby today. Got another fucking, that's actually piss that is. You know what I mean? Yeah man, Boxing Basement says, lol, Hex Toys got the branding, thumbs up emoji. Yeah man, he's given me a lot of cash over the years. He's made me a shitload of money, so. Times pretending that he hasn't seen the watch comments. Lol. Laughing face. Why would I pretend I haven't seen it? Well, you want to see this nice little Rolex, yeah? What are you saying? It's nice, isn't it? Three grand. How's your Tuesday going? It's actually Tuesday as well, isn't it? This woman messaged me a few days ago, you know, she was like, do you want to meet up on Tuesday? You know, talking about today. And I said, yeah. But she's kind of pussied out. 
she does it all the time, you know what I mean? She'll message me saying, oh, do you fancy meeting up on Friday evening? I'll say, yeah. And then when it comes to it, she like conveniently goes quiet. Yeah, I think she likes the idea of thinking, oh, this man wants to meet up with me. Yeah, he said he really wants to meet me. You know what I mean? She likes the idea of it, but when it comes to it, she pusses out. What well, fuck her anyway. But yeah, work hard and you can get a nice little Rolex like this. What are you saying? Three grand. You know, when you spend money on shit like this, it's like a good investment because it holds value. If you buy fancy clothes, even a car, it loses value. If you buy designer clothes to try and impress women, it's like, it's just stupid. Get into property, get into crypto is a bit like that. It's up and down, crypto is so. But yeah, like precious metals like this, property and land, you know, stuff like that. It's a good investment. So I thought I'd treat myself to a free grand Rolex. Oh, I don't know if I should listen to this fucking video, you know. We'll give it a few minutes. You know, that stupid moustache as well. It just makes it worse, don't it? We just, we just hate everything about him, don't we? This Connor bomb guy now. Remember when he was trying to show off, saying, oh, I've got a Rolex. Yeah, I've got a Rolls Royce. Why should I fight David Avenesian? Why should I do him any favors? I'm the young multi-millionaire. Now look at him, that stupid mustache, man. You're in that horrible position for any sportsman, but you he was doing it, Connor Bomb. He was dissing somebody who failed a drugs test, saying, oh, you should be checking your food at that level. You should be checking every little thing that goes into your system. He was really critical, so now it's happened to him. You know, he's asking us to go easy on him. But we're not going to do it, man. And Piers Morgan doesn't either. I like this Piers Morgan guy, you know. Some people don't like him, do they? I like it. I think he's all right, man. From what I've seen of him. I didn't like it when he was, like, trying to overtalk Andrew Tate, though. I'm going to play a bit of that in a minute as well. But I like his sort of like bluntness, you know, his directness. People don't like him, but I like him. You failed two drug tests. I would never, ever, ever raise my hands to something I ain't done. Yeah, Four so he talks, ago, about, um, for... he talks about pride and he's got integrity and he's, you know, his ego, he's got ego, he's got pride, yeah. But he's got like a 270 page document that he could give to the boxing board and put on the internet you know, to prove his innocence, but you don't, so, it's... I thought you got pride though, like, and he says he's suicidal as well, like, people who are suicidal, yeah, they haven't really got pride, they've got a feeling of worthlessness, they feel like their life isn't worth anything, people who are suicidal, so you can't have pride and be suicidal at the same time, so he's lying, this guy is, what is that moment like for you when you heard about the failed drug test? Um, I didn't think anything of it, to be fair, when it was the first one. Um, when they said they found an adverse finding, I didn't Probably really because you knew it was going to happen, really? didn't it? No, not at all. You, said, you know what I mean? Like, if there's like a little adverse finding, you're not going to be like, oh, well, whatever. It is what it is. You're going to be like, what? So it's like he knew, isn't it? It's like he knew. Yeah, he wasn't surprised. So he knew what was... Isn't that every sportsman's nightmare? Um, no, because I thought it may have been an error. I thought, let's run another test. An error. Straight away. Let's do, let's, you know, the, I know, I'm, I've never even heard of this thing before. You know, if I got arrested by the police, yeah, for grape, I won't be like, well, it's just a mistake, you know, it's an error. I'd be like, I'd be a bit, I'd be panicking. You know, I wouldn't just think, oh, it's a mistake, it's a mistaken identity. You'd be a bit worried, wouldn't you? You know, if the police turn up to your house, trying to arrest you for grape like you're gonna you're gonna panic a bit aren't you so why wasn't this guy panicking he's like well it's probably just a mistake yeah it is what it is like it don't add up does it straight away let's do let's that stupid you beard know, the, i know I mean, i've never even heard of this thing before. i mean the mustache this is the first time it's got a fake drug, which is uh clomiphene he's saying that you don't even know what that chlorophene is yet he's saying you don't know what it is but it's not in his system like come on man you don't if you don't know what it is how do you know if it's in your system or not? You don't know what it is. It's like this side of here. Like, look at all this shit in here. Look at all this. Contains sulfites. 
I don't know what sulfites are, do you? Do you know what sulfites are? Contain sulfites to preserve freshness, suitable for vegetarians, vegans, naturally gluten-free, free from artificial colors and sweeteners. I don't know what's in this basically, so come on, man. Do you accept this was in your body? I don't accept it was in my body. Not you don't know all. what it is, though. I, I can you not, I can know it's not in your body. Independent scientists looking at the reports. Based on my own scientists looking at the reports. Let's see the and, reports. And what we found. My career's on the line. My image is on the line. My name is on the line. And I can't be known for this. And it was more time me there. employing the best mom. people to find out what had actually happened. There's been a fighter today who's, who's just had a brain hemorrhage. There's no room for it. Who's that? I know firsthand the damage it does from my dad with other, with German. Like I said before, his dad, you know, after that fight, after he blinded that fucking Gerald McLennan, his dad like pretended to faint, you know, so he would conveniently be able to avoid getting drug tested. Yeah, that's what Nigel Bomb did after that fight there. He pretended to faint to avoid drug testing. He said he used to pop a few little fellas. Later on in this video, he talks about his own medication and he's drinking wine. So medication, you know, he's drugged up as well, isn't he, Nigel Bomb? So it kind of runs in the family. You know, he pretended to faint, didn't he, after this fight? I was, I was there the of that fight. Hold on a minute. So he just spoke about his dad fighting that fucking blind con Gerald McLennan and nearly killing him. And he's saying, okay, I've seen that here. So would I really take drugs? Knowing what could happen. But if you've seen your dad do that and your dad wasn't on drugs, you wouldn't really box in the first place, if you know what I mean. Because you can see what could happen to people. So it didn't really put you off, did it? Because you still continue to box, even though you could have fucking... This guy's lying, man. What's Coogan saying about it as well? Trishan, they've seen the work. Coogan's gone quiet on here, like with a little. I up with my coaches. It was in your body. You don't even accept no, that. I don't, I don't accept that. How so when they say you may have taken, and he got a lot of attention this, and some mockery. Yeah. But when. Why do you accept it's not in your body when you don't even know what it is? I don't believe it was there in the first place. You gotta remember, I've never. I don't even know what this thing is. The WBC don't care, man. They're getting their sanctioning fees, aren't they? They're not bothered. What did James Tony say? We be crooks. The fucking WBC, the WBC stands for that, so... They're not bothered, are they? Why would they care? They was going to put Jake Paul in the top fucking 30 if you'd have beat that Tommy Fury, so... The WBC aren't really credible, are they? You think I'm going to sit here and take this? But if you have all, what they said is, well, show us the evidence. I, but I couldn't care you've less. Got, you've got 270. You can't care less about what proving your innocence, but you got, you're saying you're having panic attacks because of this. And you're getting slandered and you're experiencing racism. And you had mental health and all this. So don't you want to like prove your innocence? I don't know if I can listen to any more of this shit, you know. Let me just get back to base. Look at all these comments. Right, let me put these comments on the screen, man. Let me get you lot involved. But yeah, I had to turn it off, man. I just can't listen to any more of that shit, man. You know, he's saying he's suicidal, but then he was like, he put up a video the other day, didn't he, of him laughing at Chris Eubank Jr. You know, getting fucked up by Liam Smith. You know, he was sitting on his little settee, one of with his dad, Nigel Bond. You know, laughing at fucking Eubank. Junior getting smacked up by Liam Smith. He didn't look suicidal then, did he? It's just lies, man. It's just, don't fall for it. Coogan's gone quiet as well, so it's, it says it all, man. Yeah, sorry, I missed that little super chat. Let me just scroll back. Who sent me a super chat? I've missed it, you know. Someone give me a little fiver. Who was it? Yes, Matthew, thanks for the super chat, yeah? For 3K. I'd want my Rolex to fit me properly, I know. <laughs> I'm all new to this, man. I'm all new to this kind of wealth. I was nearly homeless, you know, a few years ago. So, you know, now it's like, you know, people like you, Matt. You've been sorting me out with some nice super chats. But I'm not really used to money, you know, because I was nearly homeless a few fucking years ago. So now I've kind of cashed in and uh, I'm getting used to money in it I 
I used to feel a bit inadequate, you know, turning up to the gym and seeing Kel Brook there, the multi-millionaire, and Brendan and fucking Johnny Nelson. And I was just a little broke guy, you know, with the Primark shoes with holes in them. I just got off a bus, you know, to go to the gym. And I'd walk to the gym from the bus stop. I'd see all these fancy cars and I'd feel a bit inadequate, but nah, it's, it's a bit of a confidence booster. What did he say? Yes, Big Tal, thanks for the two pounds, yeah? Are your eggs giving you sleepless nights? Pay for your mum's mortgage, man. I don't know if I'll ever see my mum again, you know, till she dies. I know it sounds sad, man, but you know the thing she said to me the last time I seen her? They were a bit unforgivable, man. She said I need to get a career. Yeah? It's a bit disrespectful, isn't it? It's a bit patronising. It's a bit patronising, man. She tried to say I'm not a man as well. She said, oh, you're not a man. She didn't say she didn't say that exactly. She said, "Oh, she was talking about this other guy in the family who's like a full-time worker. You know, he looks after his kids, he looks after his mom, and that." But are you boxing Idris Elba or what? Time? He's a pussy, that guy. He's just, just a hoe. The guy's a clown, man. He's just he's like one of them women. You know, he's like there's a boxer called Ty Mitchell. You know, hit somebody and they smashed their skull on the pavement and died. And he got locked up for a few years. It's Ty Mitchell. So this little Idris Elba guy is trying to mention his name, you know, in little videos on Instagram. He's like a little woman. You know how women, like, flirt around you? Like a woman gave me a little kiss the other day, last night in a club. This nice little white woman, an 18-year-old nice little student woman came up to me and kissed me on the lips and then she went off and started dancing with all these other men and I thought she's just like flirting in it she's trying to <sighs> she's trying to flirt man some women do that they, they get like a little buzz you know from seeing men fighting over them but I ain't finna I ain't finna get locked up for some fucking woman I got arrested about a year ago for hitting a man on the chin with a left hook from the gods. And he smashed his head on the floor and I thought he was, you could get done for nonce in, mate. She's probably 15. I don't know, she's not quite well developed. Well, some are, some are. Man. Remember when I was at school and this, that man. <laughs> Finno. That's an American word and it? it's making its way over to England. Finno. I heard that fucking YB bitch. You know, say Finno. Trying to be all cool. <laughs> you lot cheer me up, man. I was a bit low. And I thought, let me go live. Let me have a little chat to these little fuckers. With the little comments. Shout out to Paul123. Thanks for the two pounds, yeah? Call an escort time. Good time of the night, yeah. I actually rang one last night, you know. And uh, she answered. And we was having a little chat. It was like 40 pounds for 15 minutes. I found her on Viva Street. And she lives near here. She's about 20 minutes away. So she gave me her address. And I started walking. And I kind of puss it out, you know, and I just turn back. Because the last, you remember that escort who came round here, you know, and I had a knife. She had a man waiting outside. There's a lot of, like, setups. You know that Cardi B, she used to, like, rob men. She used to drug them, you know, and rob them. So it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? <laughs> Do you think the Black Skellington uses escorts? I don't know. I know a lot of them guys at Sky Sports, they snort coke, you know, after the show. 
they go back to the hotel, you know, that's paid for. And they just start snorting away and just banging the ring car girls. But on camera, they have to be like politically correct, isn't it? You know that Adi Aladipo, he was like working for the zone, you know, and uh, KSI boxed. And I seen him after the show, you know, outside of a hotel and he was like trying it on with this nice little white woman. You know what I mean? But you know, on camera, he's all politically correct and he like Johnny Nelson. And I walked past him, yeah. And he looked at me and he started laughing. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't like it. I felt like it was a patronizing laugh. You know, Dave Chappelle, he, did, he was doing stand up one time, yeah, at this venue. And he said that somebody in the crowd laughed, but he didn't like the way they laughed. It was like they was laughing at him, not with him. So Dave Chappelle just ended the show and he went to Africa, you know, for a few years. Did you hear about the teacher who got pregnant by a 13 year old and he's doing zero jail time yet? Let me just have a quick look at that because I meant to look at that story. Man. Double standards, innit? 31 year old teacher gets pregnant by a 13 year old student and walks. Let's have a listen to this. Let's get to it. What's up? This is Method Man right here. Yes, Method Man. Mask you know, Spencer Farron. He tries to like look like Method Man, you know. You know, Spencer Fear and the knowledge. He tries to look like that, I'm telling you. I've noticed how he tries to go for that look. Boy. A 30-year-old woman admitted to having bump and grind with the 13-year-old and then getting pregnant with his child, serving no jail time. Here's a quote from one of the family members. I but that's what I'm saying, like 13 years old, you can get somebody pregnant. So it's like nature's way of saying like that's a good age, you know, to bang. I'm not saying like go out and bang like a fucking, you know what I mean? But you know what I'm saying, innit? I feel like if she was a man and he was a little girl, it would have been different, says the mother of the victim. That's not actually true, you know, that's just reminding me of something. Uh, this guy that I used to go to school with, he got with an underage girl, yeah. And he got away with it. He got head off her. She was probably about 15, innit? And he got head off her. He was about probably 27, 28 years old and he got away with it. He obviously he didn't get away with it. He got put on whatever, the sex offenders register, but he didn't get locked up. So I don't know if it does just apply to like women, you know, get away with it. Cause I know a man who got away with it as well. My dad was 17 and he banged my mum when she was like 13. But I don't think the police were involved. <sighs> yeah, that's the gist of it anyway. He's trying to like say, oh, it's sexist, it's double standards. Like if it happened to a man, if a male teacher banged a, you know, a schoolgirl and that, you'd get locked up. But I'll just give you an example of like, that's not what, the guy who I knew, he wasn't a school teacher. I don't know, it's whatever, man. Yes, Jade and Anthony, thanks for the super chat, yeah? Watch the Piers Morgan interview with Ernest Owens. Yeah, I watched that earlier before I did a stream. This little black zesty guy called uh, Ernest. He was trying to pull out the race card, you know, like that Connor bomb. Fucking cringe, man. Um, Ernest Owens, thank you very much for joining Look at that fucking... <sighs> ...is not the same as being racist. What yeah. was the thing I said that was no, racist? No, I, I never... Hold on. Do you want the person of colour to speak or do you want to just talk over me? Nothing to do with the skin colour. The... See what I mean? Why is he bringing up the person of colour? I fucking hate these people, you know? And You know these fucking black people who just talk like this? Because it makes... It makes like white people think that all black people are like that. You know, why are you saying, oh, are you gonna let this person of color talk? Like, do you know what I mean? It's just straight away from that. You just know this guy's a clown. Man. I told you about that black guy who got on a bus one time and he had a 20 pound note and he 
he said to the bus driver, single, I want a single ticket, which was about a pound or two pounds. The bus driver, the white bus driver said to the black guy, sorry, I haven't got any change. And the fucking black guy said, oh, it's because I'm black. You know, and all the fucking white people on the bus were like, oh, fuck, you know. Myself included, I was ashamed, didn't it? I wanted to say to all the white people on the bus, sorry about that. Just don't think all black people are like that. It's just this particular black idiot who's trying to pull out the race card because the white bus driver hasn't got any change to give to him when he tried to give him a £20 note just to buy a £2 fare. And he's saying, oh, it's because I'm black. And he just kept going on about it. You know, the whole journey. He managed to find, like, some change in it. And he just kept saying, oh, it's because I'm black. And it's, Ernest, it's, sorry, nothing. That's what this fucking black idiot's doing here. This little zesty cunt. Ernest, do, one do single you know, comment you know I've ever made. Between racist comments? So, did I say a racist tirade? What was it? You can't say one or she, whatever. I felt like your attacking of Martin Martin them. was racially biased. Here's my point, Ernest. The reason that people... I'm going to ring an escort, you know. I'm going to ask that escort to come around here instead. Let me just play... I'm going to message her, innit, while I play this. It's only five minutes left. Yo, chat, are you alright to listen to this shit? And you've attacked Meghan Markle and it's impacted her mental health. And I feel like someone like me as a black person defending her as an innocent black woman in that situation. Oh, I don't know if I can listen to any more of this shit, you know. I fucking can't do it, man. I've had enough of it. I can't fucking stand it, man. Yes, Harry. Thanks for the super chat, yeah? One pound. I get 70 pence of it, but... Paul, one, two, three, two pound, yeah? That 13-year-old has got himself in the pound for pound list. Listen, man, 13. 13. I was so scared of pussy back then when I was 13. I was fucking petrified, man. I remember when I was in class and like these girls like, asked me to get my dick out in it when I was like 14. And I pussied out, man. I couldn't do it. I was so, so nervous. But you know, now it's just completely gone the opposite way. You know, Ted Bondi, I've been watching some videos of him today. And it's interesting, man. I think he murdered about 30 women, you know, and raped them and tortured them and all that stuff, which I don't agree with. He said when he was like 14 and he was like walking around his neighborhood in America, he'd see like porn mags, you know, on the floor. And they were like violent. It was like violent porn, you know what I mean? So that kind of inspired him to do it himself. Ted Bundy. Yes, Luke, thanks for the super chat, yeah? A nice little fiver. That's good of him, man. He didn't say anything either. He just gave me the money, you know, supporting. Supporting, man. Why is Spencer Fair and racist? I don't know him, I don't know his upbringing. But I've got an auntie who's black and she's like really bitter because all of her brothers, her black brothers, they all got with white women. They like that white posse, you know, like I do. So all, her, all, her, all of her black brothers got with uh, white women. You know what I mean? So a lot of black women are fucking bitter, you know, twisted. You know, because white women are more in demand. There was a study on the dating app Tinder and it said that the least liked woman on the dating apps is black women. You know, that's, that's a study, that's statistics. What did Mayweather say? Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. But I suppose it's like men who are giving the it's true man it is true so a lot of black women are bitter in it so you know spencer fearing he might have been raised in a bitter black household 
you know where uh, they were slagging off white people, you know, like Joshua saying, don't buy from their shops. So yeah, that's probably why this little Spencer Fearon guy is a little black supremacist. You know him and that Tondi. You can tell, can't you? You can tell, man. But they have to behave, innit? Because they kind of... I think that Spencer Fearon was doing a little podcast on Sky Sports. So he had to behave, didn't he? Spencer Fearon. Big up Boxing King Media, best boxing channel out there at the moment. Big up bro, yeah man, shout out to Boxing King Media. What's here now, about 200,000 subscribers, yeah. It's good to see, I need to see him overtake IFL. Yes, Harry. Sorry, let people call him for relationship advice. So how do I do that then? How would I get some of you lot in here? I would give you my number, yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to give you my number because some of you lot are weird, man. Some of you lot manage to get hold of my number and you just keep fucking ringing me up. You know, and saying, oh, how's Coogan? You know, asking me these questions at stupid times at night. You know, ringing me, saying, how's Coogan? You know, asking me stupid questions, man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a SIM card, yeah. And when I do a live, I'm going to put my number in the chat so you can ring me. And we can have a little chat, put it on loudspeaker. And uh, yes, Ty and Dharma, yeah. Shout out to 20 times. Thanks for the super chat, yeah. But I put that little, you know, that little whore on loudspeaker. And we're having a little argument. Let me play that video. Oh, that's the live, man. That live was good, man, talking to that nice little white woman there. You see her there? You see that? Her arse is a bit flat, but she, she's quite nice. That's my type, innit? But yeah, let me play this one here. This is when I'm arguing with a fucking whore. How can it be private? Horrible, this thing here. Horrible tattoo. Look at that. Come on, man. You see that tattoo there? Can you see that? Yeah, that's fucking horrible, man. What's that? That tattoo, it looks like Predator, don't it? Have you ever watched Predator? It's fucking, it's horrible. You're trying to charge people money for that. You fucking horrible tattoo. It's fucking horrible. What's the fucking point of that? It's just stupid. And you're a sex worker. You're supposed to try and attract men. You got some horrible fucking alien on your leg. It's vile, isn't it? It's fucking vile, man. Hello? Hello? Why the fuck are you YouTubing us? Who's this? One of the escorts you've phoned. One of the escorts, yeah? Yeah, why the fuck are you YouTubing us? Do you want to get on the YouTube? No, no, I don't want to get on the YouTube. I don't want my business all over fucking YouTube. What is wrong with you? You're already what on. What kind of man are you? You're already on the internet. What kind of woman are you? What kind of what, swag what, are you? What kind of man are you? Like, why would you even do something you, like that? You know, like it's a private thing. Then, like, you're on the fucking what? internet. You're on a public what? fucking you're site. You're on the internet. You dumb slut. How can it be private? <laughs> you got your fucking arsehole on the internet. Dumb slot. It doesn't fucking matter. How is that private though? Partner. Should have said, oh, my partner doesn't know and you're putting it on there. What do you mean? Why, why are you. You've obviously got no morals. You've got a partner and you're a sex worker and you're trying to have a go at me saying, what kind of a man am I? You're fucking sleeping around with all these men who are nutting in you and jizzing on your face. You're probably picking up all kinds of diseases and you've got a man, you're going home to him, he doesn't know about this. And you're saying, what kind of person am I? What kind of slag are you, you fucking... It's not funny. Your kids are going to see it though, so it's your problem, isn't it? Why are you going on the internet with your pussy out like that? Why would you even ruin people's lives like that? Why are you ruining your own life? Why are you it's ruining your own do. life? So why are you going on the internet with your pussy out though for your kids to see and their mates to pass the That's photo around at school? Business. Yeah, this is a public business, Viva Street. 
business. It is my business because you, but you put, you made it public though. You've made it public. So fucking what? We don't need other people publicising it more. It's just not right. Do you want promotion or what? No, I don't want promotion. Do you want your kids to see your posse or what? Listen, I haven't got any kids. Your nephews and nieces, your mum and dad. Do you want to? But that's not that's not your business. You, you shouldn't be doing things like that. You shouldn't be sh selling your posse for a few quid a month. Though, yeah, that's the risk you that's take, isn't it? So you're yeah. you're putting yourself on the public side, that's you know, to get exposed. We, we still have feelings, you know. We still have pride. Yeah, but these men are going to objectify you, though. These men are going to objectify you, innit? Yeah, so you don't need to do it further, do you? By publicising. But you started it, though. I'm just responding. N no, you just don't do stuff like that. You clearly know it's wrong to know you're going to get reported. Yeah, it's, you're, but you're, you're public, though. So how can it get reported, though? So what? It doesn't matter. It you does shouldn't do things like that. It's not I put in like little sad romantic music, whatever it is. Pop this flag anyway, don't I? I did well, man. Yes, Joe. How did the brass know she was on YouTube? One of you lot told her, innit? Because obviously I shared it, I like made her number fucking public. So I could ring her up and uh, one of you lot told her, man, snitching. A bunch of snitches in the chat, some of you. Yes, Dalton, thanks for the £10, yeah? Appreciate it, man. No, oh, you're not snitches. It made, made for good content, didn't it? 